<laughs> Chest under the wire. <laughs> Man, I'm telling you. <laughs> well, you're watching a verbose Wednesday. I'm Robert Lee, the <laughs> the executive video producer and uh, founder of Shalala Productions, where we create marketing videos as well as providing live streaming services specifically within the medical and the educational community with specialty in pop culture. And, <laughs> and I'm with my colleague, uh, uh, Matt Haas. Hi everyone. <laughs> I'm getting my stuff together here. I have a new camera. So hopefully I'm in higher resolution for you. It, uh, StreamYard had an odd little fit with this new camera. So I needed to change a setting to get it to work that I didn't know I needed to change, but hey, here I am. Is this the, the new Sony camera? Yes, it's the A6100. And I had to set it to resolution auto because StreamYard is 720 only. And right. I had it set to only throw out 1080. And I guess when I was sending 1080 to StreamYard, it was like, me no likey. So I had to uh, quit, quick fix that. So now it's fixed. So I'm here. I have a lot of YouTube channels. Um, find me on YouTube. <laughs> he's, so, he's so a little bit of sort that normally he would have flashed one of these little babies. Oops, I'm holding Ooh, upside down here. Oh, yeah. Oh, hang on. I got it. No, I got upside down. No, wait. See, this is the thing, folks. When you're not really coordinated with your left and right, it gets to be trouble. As you can tell, I'm a little bit. Uh, there you go. So. All right, here. Pass, pass, pass the wood one over to me. Uh, hang on. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. It's coming back to you. All right. Whoop. Got it. <laughs> oh, I love we it. We spare no expense with the uh, uh, effects, uh, I suppose. So. That's right. That's right. So, uh, is it too soon to ask uh, for you to give us a little demo with your roadcaster? Because I know you've been, uh, you mentioned about how you got some pretty cool uh, sounds uh, queued up there. Yeah, we. Well, I can show you the roadcaster. All right. Uh, let me see if I can flip my camera. All right. Doing this in StreamYard might be a little tricky. Okay, right. It lets me switch my uh, C920. There we go. Hello. Okay. <laughs> Can you see me? I, I see you. Uh, I was going to say loud and clear, but that doesn't make sense. But... No, it doesn't make sense. So, <laughs> but I, we, we got the, the, the face cam or the close-up cam. Okay. So here is the Rodecaster Pro. Mm -hmm. And I have sound pads. And I guess it's having a hard time focusing. Oh, there you go. That's a little better. Very so, nice. Yeah, you, you can press the sound pad. Oh, my. <laughs> and it's, it stays red while it's playing. And then we'll fade back. Well, I mean, it stays dark red. Oh, yep. And then we'll fade. Also, up here is the icon. Look at the icon when I hit play. It kind of see how it, it, it drains down. Okay. So, because this one's really long. So, that's a two minute, 36 second. So, it's not, it's not fading down. Mm -hmm. But this one's only a four second item. So, that's like a cool thing. And right. these, these can loop or they can stop in the middle. So, okay. if I hit one and then hit it again, yep. see how I stopped it? Yep. You can change that behavior. You can, uh, um, and then you, you can have it auto loop like this one. When it goes to the end, it just auto loops again. And to, um, to load these up is pretty easy. I have a app. Let me show you an, I am going to screen share. So put my, Put my screen share up, please. Okay. Oh, there it is. You can, this is my up the nose cam now. <laughs> I uh, can't, my computer's doing a little weird stuff here. Yeah, bring oh, stream there you go. Okay, there you go. 
uh, just a browser. But down here I have an app called Roadcaster Pro. There it is. Just this little window here. And these are the sound pads that I can configure. And I have three banks of eight. So the second bank, I only have one object on here. Okay. And here I have all, all of them. And then to move a sound file, you just click, hold, and drag a sound file on here. And uh, let me find find any mp3 like I don't know what that is but let me just put that there and it's transferring it uh, looks like a good friend Paul Weber's on uh let's see hey boys you're playing nicely well we're trying we're trying <laughs> uh he's uh demonstrating the the roadcaster pro you've had it like about over a month now uh with the uh probably uh, yeah yeah two or three weeks okay and so I, you can even change the color of the pad. I, I might want this one purple or pink or yellow. And, um, and now I can come back over. Okay. Now I could come back over here. Mm -hmm. And this, this is the first bank. So yep. to, to switch it out, I can come up to this touch. And this touchpad is wicked awesome. It's just like an iPhone. So fast and responsive. So I can come to, to um, sounds. And then here's bank one. And then there's bank two, Matt's opener. So now I have, so this one was grayed out before. I only had one, remember? Yep. So now I can push this. Welcome to All Things YouTube. You're watching all things YouTube. So. Very that's nice. How, that's how you can do it. And I this is just a cheap piece of cardboard. Yep. That has my little cheat sheet on it. Because it, it looks a lot nicer without the cardboard. But hey, you know, this is a production environment and I need the cheat sheet. So here, here are my intro songs. Okay. And this is the, um, the girl announcing all things YouTube. Just a real quick one. And then here's my background music. So if I want like a, a track underneath, mm -hmm. that's a 100% royalty free song. And it's just nice to put underneath the audio. So that's there. And here's the fun sounds, you know, yep. the, um, oh my applause and rim shot. I had, I had a lot of other ones. You can see I scrapped, that was Homer's dope. And this was the, wow you know that anime wow okay gotcha. <laughs> that's very popular very and nice that's, that's really it i mean the only clunky thing is if you want to switch to pad two uh -huh. you've got to come up here you got to hit it once right hit it twice yep it's it's three clicks okay so maybe three clicks is too too many clicks for someone's liking but okay. you know i i try and live with it with the eight like i could live with eight sound pads okay and then um, this isn't the only option for, for sound pads. Let me flip my camera back over. Give me a second to play okay. with that. So we'll go back to the HD60S Plus. Very nice. Which I look a little dark. I don't know why I'm so dark. Because uh, your eyes are closed? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I should open my eyes. Well, oh, there you go. There you go. That looks a little better. So, um, so that's that's the Rodecaster Pro, folks. It's a pretty nifty gizmo. And I found something out about the Rodecaster Pro. And if Paul Weber's here, yep, maybe he can uh, he can chime in if he has any thoughts about it. I have a ticket out with the Rodecaster folks because I can't get enough volume out of my microphone. And I'm thinking it's got to be damaged because I, I can't get it loud enough. Now, it's, it's loud. It, it's, it's good now. I, I think my levels are okay. It will not go louder than this. Right. Um, but then someone told me about a cloud lifter. And since you're a video production guy, you might have some thoughts about this. And I'm not wearing my correct glasses. Sorry. It so... really is me. See? <laughs> Um, so they, they said, 
you might want a cloud lifter on it. Now with the Shure SM7B, which is the microphone that's very popular, and uh -huh. that's Joe Rogan has one, like a lot of people have the SM7B. Uh -huh. Are you familiar with it? It's, it's a very popular mic. And it's the same, it's a dynamic mic, just like mm -hmm. this one. They say it needs more gain. It's gain hungry is what they call it. I'm like, that's a weird term. There's a product called Cloud Lifter. Yeah. That's this little rectangle and you jack two XLR cables into it and you send this unit phantom power. Yeah. Now, dynamic mics do not need phantom power. Right. But they say send this thing phantom power. It will not pass the phantom power forward. Right. So this mic is safe. And even if you send this mic phantom power, it's not going to do anything. Right. Um and then it will use the phantom power to give it up to 25 dB more gain. So when it comes into the mixer, it will already be very loud. So then the mixer doesn't have to crank it up very high. Well, Paul chimes in saying that that's your compressor working. It socks off and or the limiter stopping it getting any hotter. Well, I've had the compressor completely off. And I found out that the Rodecaster Pro has a master compressor. Mm -hmm. So it has a compressor for all eight channels. Okay. And each one of the microphones, the four microphone inputs, has its own compressor. So there's two compressors on the unit. I've killed them both. It will not get loud enough. Right. Because when, when I bring it into my video editing app, yeah. I've got to punch up the volume. Like okay. it's not as loud as I want it to be in my video editing app. Yeah. And then when I punch up the volume, up comes the static and stuff like this. So I think I need to spend $170 more. <laughs> I hate to do this because I just spent all this money on the Roadcaster Pro. So I think I need to get this cloud lifter. Well, it's not a hundred. It's, it's less than that, but I need to buy another XLR cable because I have a, uh, like a three foot XLR cable coming out of this. I'm gonna need another little foot and a half XLR cable to yeah. connect into it. I have other ones, but I, I want two short ones. And um, yeah, but I'm gonna wait till they come back and and tell them that because the way I pitched it, like I had an electrical issue with this. Like I yeah. thought I damaged it. I thought it was damaged electrically, and the preamps just weren't working. Yeah. <laughs> But I didn't plug the electrical in the whole way. Like, it has a power brick. Yeah. And then from one end, it goes to the electrical outlet. And then the power brick has another end that you connect into the unit. Right. Well, the big fat plug that goes into the wall, it was only partially stuck in this plastic brick. And when it would wiggle, it would, it would stop. So I thought, I thought there was like a major electrical issue with it. Here, I just didn't have the thing fully seated plugged in. And I thought that electrical issue is what's not having me get much gain out of my, or, you know, I don't know. So, and, and, and uh, the pro tip from Paul, buy a decent cable. <laughs> you would be happy. Uh, well, he, he helped, he helped me with these speakers. Oh yeah. And I bought cables that were so fat and so durable a lifetime warranty like you can put them on a stage and use them forever like for the whole like the whole career of acdc these cables would have lasted and they're so thick thick yeah. i had to i had to put them on my belt sander in the wood shop to scrape off the plastic because they wouldn't fit in the like two of them side by side couldn't fit in the unit right because i have the left and the right kind of like this well they oriented up and down but it's it's the left unit and and they were so close together that so i've got good cables right I've, these the, the, the six foot cable just run into the speakers yep it was 25 dollars. i spent 50 dollars worth of cables yep. just to power speak <laughs> and my xlr cables are good I, I don't buy cheap xlr cables anyway all right well uh i thought i uh this is kind of fun I know like uh, earlier I mentioned that we were sharing uh, some really cool wallpapers uh, from uh, a, a, a friend I met uh, through Instagram. We just uh, kind of connect, I shouldn't say connect, kind of, we connected just in terms of just uh, promoting uh, Black Lives Matters um, information and stuff like that. And so actually she's actually on, on the stream right now. Hey Mackenzie. And uh, what we, what we did was just that uh, just her and uh, the photographer, Dan, 
Le Faber. Oh God, I'm having a bad streak of mispronouncing last last names of people. Uh, and they, because uh, I, I had asked them if the, uh, the if the photos would be available for online for sale, and they just uh, gave it to me for free, and and just said to make sure to share with everyone. So in the comments there, uh, we have the the download link that people can just download for free. And just uh, let me see if I can pull up a couple just to give some examples. Uh, we may be off screen, but at least you get to see some of the uh, the cool images here. Thank you, Mackenzie, for doing that. Hello, by the way, I'm Matt. And that's Matt. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. So this was the first one. Wow, look at that. Yep. And the, the second one is my favorite, is just the with the balloon there. Uh, and you can see her Instagram handle there. So if you want to see other uh, cool photos that she's posted on uh, on her Instagram uh, account, uh, you know, just I just uh, recommend people check it out just because there's a lot of cool stuff there. I and, love the surrealism like that. That's yeah, so wonderful. That that really jumped out. That's that's what made. I mean, I mean the fact that the it was just cool photos and just very, very is, creative. Is, is she the model? Yep. Oh, cool. And uh, hang on, I'm having a little trouble. Just I wonder how that's done. Does, does she like have the shutter auto flash, or does some does she have a camera person taking her? Back? Well. Uh, Dan, the, the, the photographer, he actually did a, a, a very interesting way to show a behind the scenes where it's like a GIF, I think it was. Like the first image you see, the actual image. And then the second one's kind of like a behind the scenes of uh, how they staged it uh, for the photo. It's really cool. So, um, oh, good friend John's up there. John, John Kowalski. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, oh, God. I just lost my train of thought again. Sorry. Oh, uh, so uh, the cool thing uh, with the link, it's also available not only for desktops, but for tablets uh, as well as for phones. So it, it's really cool. I, I mean, the minute I, I got the download link, I immediately put it on my phone. It's it's a really neat, neat thing to see. So <laughs> thank you, Mackenzie. It's uh, uh, Dan Lefebvre. Lefebvre. <laughs> um, that's his Instagram handle. So if you go there, you can see the the making of the uh, of the one with the balloon that we just showed earlier, as well as they showed one with the with the jar that she's holding. It, they're really cool photos. So uh, again, uh, Mackenzie, thanks thanks for sharing that uh, with with us for just to be able to uh, share with everyone. It's it's just really a cool photo, and I highly recommend to check out her Instagram uh, account there, just because there's a lot of cool photos there to check out. Very cool. Very cool. And oops. hey, you want to, want to see something crazy? All right. Sorry. So in my troubleshooting of my Roadcaster Pro, look look what I did. Okay, let's see it. I borrowed my friend's identical Heil PR40 microphone. <laughs> what? So I have two Heil PR40 microphones. <laughs> I thought maybe it was the microphone. So to roll out my problem being the microphone, I'm like, well, let's let's get another one. So yeah, yeah. I, I make these stands by it. Look, I made them this mic stand. Yeah, isn't that cool? <laughs> Rubber feet, spray painted black. His can articulate up with this with this adjustment knob. <laughs> oh man. It's funny. Like I'll buy expensive equipment, but like I'll make my I'll make my own wooden stand because I don't want to spend a hundred dollars on the stand. So I'll just, right, <laughs> you can't see the stand. It's out. It's out of the. It's out of the the picture frame. So anyway, <laughs> no, no, just uh, I couldn't think of a good punchline other than you know, hey. So, so, sometimes you know you you got to geek out and have two high end microphones instead of just the one. <laughs> well, there you go. So <sighs> I know, I know. Uh, I guess we could go into the topic of the day. It was I, the it was the pop culture stuff. Yep. Hang on. Let me uh, get the uh, the goofy uh, intro. I had here. And we're back. <laughs> Not that we ever left, so. 
That was a good jam. Ah, yeah, you can never underestimate a, a good jam. Look at uh, this. Like now, now, now that I'm all zoomed out, I'm starting yeah. to see some of the things in my background that were sort of hidden, like this little thing here. Yeah, it just like you could never see the stand it was on. Yeah, <laughs> I, made, I made my own little stand for this. <laughs> now you can see because I'm I'm more zoomed out. Oh man! <laughs> I have my other look. I have another wedding ring. I had I bought myself a different wedding band. Because you got the the two uh, microphones for that, or uh, well, yeah, I have two microphones. I'm gonna need two wedding bands. No, th this one was a half size too, sm or a full size too small. So anyway, but, uh, <laughs> he he has my wedding now. He's not married, by the way, ladies. This is just a faux wedding band. So if you uh, your microphone single is what you're saying. My, my Dalek over here is is single. Okay. So if you wanna me, I'm sorry, I'm taken. I'm taking, so I'm off the market. But but the Dalek, you know, don't let that wedding band fool you. That is, uh... so that so that that's that's on the record. Uh, just to clarify, clarify everyone. So yeah. he's got somewhat of a temper, but if you can look past that, he'll be really good for you. I think. Good to know. Uh, so yeah, the topic. I mean, like like I said earlier, it's it's a, it's about entertainment. And it was just the idea that, uh, you know, even even though, like, uh, folks are staying home and, and such, that it's just interesting that other sites are using, you know, video conferencing tools or what have you. And it just really drives home the point that, the one, as long as you got great content, and the other being that if you got a really good fan base, you know, it, I mean, it's... I was going to say it sells for itself, but, I mean, essentially, um, it's just the idea that, I mean... It's a good good way to get good 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 engagement from your audience, just because you you have fans that are familiar with with the I was gonna say product, but in this case, just the the, the folks that are on the show or, or play or what have you, and uh, you know it doesn't matter whether if their camera's crappy or not, if, if the content's great and you got a good fan base there. I mean, I was gonna say it, it sells for itself, but uh, well, yeah, pop pop culture is a good way to pull in a, a already existing fan base. Right. And you can capitalize on that as a live streamer because they'll come over. They'll, they'll, they want to see their properties that they love so much. <clears throat> right. Um, and I. <laughs> but there's some do's and don'ts. Uh, the, the don't being. <laughs> don't. Uh, <laughs> don't make your fan base enraged by doing something that goes against canon. <laughs> of the fan base <laughs> so like, if you're gonna play the star trek game what would you call this it's the vulcan the salute the like, that's that's the formal name of it so like if you're gonna play in that world don't misrepresent what this is you know that's the... <laughs> I, I forget I, I forget who created this t-shirt but uh it would have like Spock doing that, and then the caption says, "May the Force be with you." <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was purely. I mean, you could tell that it was done on, on purpose, but it just cracks me up every time I see something like that where they just kind of mesh the two. It, that just, was rage bait for sure. I actually, I had one where they just combine different shows where they, um, they had the start. I think it was either the uh start they had these the cast from firefly dressed up from folks from star trek and they made reference to the cast of babylon 5 <laughs> and i forget how they incorporate star wars it it's just a, it's just a hilarious thing i mean it was done so well that i think people knew it was it was it was done deliberately to just get a rise out of people but it was it went the other way where people thought it looked really cool um I've got somewhere in my Instagram uh, uh, account where I posted that, but it's it's the funniest thing. I mean, yeah, no, I, I've seen them where they put the starship from one property and they'll put some saying from the other. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a snarky way to get a rise out of people. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, you you have you have to respect the fan base, and you need to you need to play with the rules that exist in the in that fan base, or all of the goodwill and all of the eyeballs that you've brought into your content are going to 
not only go away, but they'll probably actively seek to hurt you because they're very protective of their properties. Yeah, I mean, the only stuff I had, like the, the show, was just that I thought was kind of neat was, um, oops, hang on, I'll get it right. There we go. Um, oops, got my show flow notes there. Didn't mean to do that. Uh, there's a couple of sites there uh, I saw that kind of illustrate the point where they're just uh, finding ways to engage with their with their fan base. This uh, site called Stars in the House is is what what's the name it says like they're interviewing stars in their house and it's either just people from earlier tv shows or current ones that are just talking with them and it's it's just kind of neat that the it's another way of how they're gauging with the fans um a, a popular one that uh i think before he decided to take a break from it uh josh gad who does the voice of olaf in frozen oh, and okay. he, had, he had some uh, interesting episodes where he brought the cast from like really popular uh movies like ferris bueller's day off ghostbusters and they would re reunite and just talk about the show and they even actually have them like uh, act out uh scenes just to raise money for charity and that's uh so fun yeah that that's that's a really a fun one that to check out and uh and it's it's kind of funny just because like you'll, you'll see like the the fan the well actually since this was pre-recorded uh there's they couldn't like interact with them live because I'm pretty sure if they did, they would just like s crash the server there. But uh, there's like a there's a ton of people just trying to post, just to, uh, replying like what they thought of the video and stuff like that. And um, well, see, so this is an interesting take because you have the actual actors of the property, you know, on the stream. I mean, a lot of people won't have that luxury. But um, yeah, these are huge properties. Back to the Future is, is huge. Ghostbusters, there is a rabid Ghostbuster fan base. It's it's insane. Exactly. Lord yeah. of the Rings. I mean, hello, people are nuts over yeah. all the references to Lord of the Rings are floating around pop culture. Yeah. And uh, and even now, like uh, the big thing with Comic Con, where they're just uh, just doing it from from the safeties of their home and what they did like with uh bill and ted i guess they have a, another movie coming out called face the music uh i mean bill and ted face music and they did the panel all on all online there and uh it's pretty interesting just to see how even like with the a video conferencing too that they try to put some uh, high production value in there just to shake it up but uh, to have fun with it but um but it's it's just like folks just the uh, as they say, you be yabbering away, yeah. and it's a. <laughs> I love it. Keanu is huge, man. He is a superstar. Yep, and they even get the guy that who played Death uh, in the last film to come back, which is pretty funny. And uh, and so it's it's just interesting, just that even though like, just just using common video conference too, they have got a great fan base, and you know they these are entertainers that know how to engage, just to. Uh, you get like a positive response and even like before, like some of these shows, like the late night shows, they've been working out of their home too. And it's pretty interesting just to see, um, the, the for format change. I think you get a lot more, uh, interesting approach of how they interview where before, I guess you could say they pander to the crowd just because they have people watching, but because it's just the interviewer and the interviewee it's interesting how the, the conversation just goes into deep dive. And I think it just has like a, a fresh take of, uh, of just not only getting to know the, the retainers, but just how they put a different spin on it. It's just like conversation, kind of like what we're having, except I'm kind of jibber jabbering a lot more than I expected. Early on, there were some cringe worthy moments of these big stars who let's face it, they have whole production crews to figure all this stuff out for them. Some yeah. of them were using the internal microphone of the laptop. It was so bad. Like they just did everything wrong. Right. Some of them are just awful. But I think that has quickly kind of worked itself out now. Because <laughs> you can't you can't play that game, especially if you're having a you know a top tier television late late night talk show and you're putting out crap. There's just yeah, it was bad. John yeah. Krasinski did a good job with his uh, some good news like that. That was done right. 
Like he had good equipment. He had good editing, good sound. I mean, it, and it was, wasn't high production value, but like the things you shouldn't do, he didn't do. <laughs> you can't say that for a lot of his colleagues. Some of yeah. his colleagues put out crap. But it's interesting that uh, it, it's almost like it has that kind of crowdfunded feel where they encourage fans. The fans are already doing it themselves of doing their own version of uh, some good news. And he would just incorporate it in the show. It's almost like he kind of solved a labor problem by just like taking great footage or other type takes of it and just incorporate in the show. Yeah. Hey, but. you know, um, it's, it's kind of, <laughs> it was kind of good for a while. Cause it's like, yeah, you, you know, now you know what it actually takes. Like some YouTubers kind of got flack, like we're in, in some circles, like, Oh, we're just YouTubers. Right. But look at us. Like we're putting out 10 times the production value of these high end shows and we're one person <laughs> with consumer with consumer grade equipment. Right. Doing doing way better stuff than these hot shots think that they can cobble together. But I think now now they got production crews out to the house and <laughs> they've set them up properly. Push this button, don't push that button. <laughs> they got the lights dialed in, you know. Exactly. Yeah. So um, but on that, that was my point. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah, if, if you, if you want to bring eyeballs on your stuff, start layering in pop culture references and play up to those fan bases. Just, uh, don't cross the line. You know, like if you're doing Harry Potter, you've, you've got to know the name of the four houses. <laughs> yeah. Ravenclaw, Slytherin, Hufflepuff, and Gryffindor. <laughs> I almost said Glinda the, the Good Witch. I'm like, oh, that doesn't sound right. Don't, don't. <laughs> That's don't mess, don't mess with perfection. The Wizard of Oz is one of the greatest cinematic masterpieces of all time. Do you know they remastered that in 8K because the original film, mm -hmm. the master film, was so well preserved. Like, after they made the movie, like they knew they had something special. So they sealed it all up and they kept it temperature controlled for decades. And when they got out this film, it was in pristine condition and they high res scanned every single frame and then color correct. And they did everything to it. You can see, you can count the individual hairs on the Wicked Witch's mole. Like it's that. <laughs> is that spectacularly redone it's such high resolution there isn't equipment to play that much resolution like i can't wait till technology catches up where maybe it's even more than 8k maybe it's 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 some obscene resolution that they scanned that that film with wizard of oz i'm still can't get over the mold comment <laughs> that's what they say that's what they say yeah. That they could see the 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 witch's mole. Got it. Yeah, I don't know if they digitally painted them in or not, but whatever they did, they it is <laughs> it is such high resolution. It's going to be spectacular. Oh God. Oh, that's, that's a great movie. I, yeah, I mean, the, the joke with with me is that uh, back in preschool, junior high. It seems like The Wizard of Oz was like a go-to film that teachers would use so they can always take a break and just go elsewhere. So, and the kids just be just be transfixed to the TV. There's a book too. Like it was, it was based off of a book, and the book was a little weird. The, the Hollywood did it a lot better. They de-weirded it. They de-weirded it. Yeah, yeah. Like the lion was kind of funky, and the Tin Man was a little, little, little awkward. I don't quite understand it, and it was. It was wasn't so, you know, off in this dream world back in the real. It, that separation I don't think was totally there. Hollywood did did it better. Yeah, I, I worked mean, with a woman named Glenda, and they're like, "Oh, you're Glenda the Good Witch." Jeez. <laughs> like, oh, so she hadn't. She didn't make any uh, Harry Potter reference or anything like that. Well, at the time there was no Harry Potter, but. Okay, so we're going back in the Wayback Machine. Yeah, this got was, it. It's in the Wayback Machine. Uh, uh anyway yeah uh pretty much i think <laughs> we got as far as we can on the topic but uh oh wait 
I think just got a, a little bit of a, a comment here from John earlier. I missed that. He said he took a $5 mic stand with a boom, took it apart, and drilled a hole in his desk for it. And now I have a rotating boom arm for my mic. Yeah, now he has a That's good. It's good. Don't be afraid to drill into desks. <laughs> that's, that's the thing. That was one of the questions that came across the live streaming pros channel. They're like, I don't want to drill a hole in my desk. My desk's a thousand bucks. They're like, break out the drill bit, baby. <laughs> you got to customize. <laughs> customize those things. Uh, yeah, I'll probably need to take a class on how to operate a drill because otherwise I'd be like, <laughs> well, as a woodworker, Hey, you, you want to see something fun with this camera? Let's see it. Watch watch the autofocus in motion. All right. Fall by you. Fall by you. Look how fast that is. <laughs> That's some depth of field right there, folks. I'm telling you, look at that. I, I'm only on F2.0. I can go down to F1.4. Let me do that. Here we go. All right. Uh, one point eight. This is what you're looking for. <laughs> There's one point six. Look at it getting blurrier. Yeah. There's one point four. I think that's too blurry. You think that's too? Now I have to turn down the lights because it's letting more light in. Right. Whoops. Oh dear. Oh my. Now you zoomed in. There you go. Oh man, come on. I'm pushing too many buttons. There we go. Now I'm back to uh, go one six one eight two zero. Oh. What was I before? <laughs> I thought you were two eight. No, that's two eight. Okay, so maybe one eight, maybe. I was at two point two. I think it was at two point two. Yeah, maybe I was at two. That's good. Maybe, maybe we'll go to two point zero. Oh. Can you still read? Like I want people to be able to read. What that hey, your your monitor is a little fuzzy. Oh, got a question for you from John. What camera did you get, Matt? I got the Sony A6100 with the Sigma F1.4 16 millimeter lens. What they recommend. I got what they recommend. And the most difficult thing was the HD60S Plus capture card. I, I bought that direct from Elgato and it took a, well, a, thankfully it was in stock, but it took nine days to get here. Oh, he said it was two. Yeah, okay, I'm back on two. Thank you, John. I was going to watch the replay. And make sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, John has a good eye of things, and uh, and my uh, I wasn't sure if that was. I don't know why I thought it was like one eight. I think I'm a little too red. Am I coming across red? I just I don't know. I had it on the vivid mode because the vivid mode makes this look dark blue, yeah. but it punches up the redness. I thought if I would take it back to standard it would uh restore my non-red complexion because i'm not this red in person believe me i'm not good to know but, <laughs> yeah. but um well, that's cool how, how long have you had the camera because i remember you mentioned about trying to that the the dummy battery wasn't uh oh yeah i, I, had, I had to buy the uh the um electric power source to replace the battery right okay let's see the camera i got the lens the fifth so i think i got the camera on the sixth so exactly two weeks i've had the camera two weeks right okay yeah. very nice yeah i was sitting now see john's got the a5100 with the stock lens okay that's good i was gonna get the a5100 but the A6100 was just a little bit more. So I'm like, and the A6100, I think, came out in 2019, and the A5100 was a couple years earlier. And um, so, I don't know. I just, and believe me, I am not a Sony fan whatsoever. I've got major problems with the company just from a corporate standpoint. But... I got so sick of it because this this C920, I, yeah. I couldn't control like the app that would let you dial it in because, you know, I, I like to turn off the autofocus and I like to, you know, I, I like to tweak it. 
and I got it looking really good. But then I upgraded my computer, and yeah. the new version of the app, it doesn't like recognize it. So I would go into StreamYard and I couldn't use it. I would go into Zoom and I couldn't use it. But right. then I would reinstall the app and I could use it. I was I like I am tired of having crappy video. And the only way to stabilize the video was to get one of these legit cameras with the capture card. And John adds that the 6100 was out of stock when I was buying. Hmm. You know, from what I can tell, the only difference is the um, the autofocus. Yeah. Like the autofocus, the, the autofocus for the A5100, I'm told, deals with contrast differences. So if, if you're pulled out of your background, like if you're separate from your background, it, it, it works really good. But if, like, if you're dark and the background's dark, the autofocus won't work as well. Where this autofocus, it detects facial features and will follow the, eye, the eyeballs. And so it's, but you know, like, what's the big deal? I mean, autofocus is autofocus. Do I care that it's that fast? I mean, yeah, it's kind of a gimmick, but like that's not the make or break thing. Yeah, yours is yours is rocking pretty quick there. Yeah, because I it's it's a it's a documentary broadcast camera I'm using, so yeah. slight cheat. He well, says that... co color profiles too. Autofocus and color profiles are different. John Kavaleski says, yeah, yeah. Did did you uh, have like a custom uh, picture? Let me try this again. Do you have a custom color profiles for your camera, or are you using the factory settings? I don't know how to answer that. Um, I'm on the standard color profile. It had it had standard. It had daylight. It had landscape. Now landscape is an interesting setting because it wants to punch the blues up. Yeah. So when I go to landscape, this blue goes like crazy. I could probably do it here for you. I could find the setting. Let me see. Oh, find it. okay. I know, like uh, with some cameras, you could use that and you could tweak the color profiles by, you know, either messing around with the gamut yeah. or the. Yeah, you, uh, you you can. Um, it even had some sort of grid yeah. with blue, red, and then you could put a little dot somewhere. I had no idea of what that meant or what. Oh, and I, I, the white balance is really. I have to figure that out. You mean how to use it or? Yeah, because auto white balance, it would kind of shift things darker. And like, I didn't want, it was, it was an awkward, like here, let me, I'm in white balance now. Let me go. Do you have like a, do you have a piece of white paper? Yeah. So it's just a matter of like, you'd have someone hold the white paper and then you push the button for the white balance and the, and then the camera would uh, correct itself as based on the right now i'm where am i at with white balance john and oh look see look it's changing mm -hmm. so this is custom one this is underwater is this what i'm supposed to do daylight day white john as i think you can save settings as a profile and then this is about series sony as well as having factory pieces. Yeah. I mean, with my camera, um, they call it picture profiles. I'm able to go in there and just kind of mess around with the colors and just save it that way. So I would, I would presume the 6000 could do that. So, so this, now it's on auto, auto white balance. Mm -hmm. Now watch, it'll, it'll fade around. Like, you know, I'll go red and I'll go pale, I think. Now that it's on auto. I don't know. This is a white card. Is it? Is it not the right white balance? Can you tell? Well, usually, like you want to make sure there's nothing on the on the white piece of paper, and then, or you could like even like flip it, flip your sticker back and, and zoom in on that, and then just be able to adjust the white balance on your camera there, and then the other colors corresponding to it would just accordingly based on the white balance. I'll get a white piece of paper. So, folks, I guess we're also doing a little bit of a, a demo of just uh, how you would white balance. And, yes, I do have a, uh, <laughs> a graphic for that. Hang on.
Here's a white piece of paper. So then either your camera person, would, what they would do is just would zoom in on the white paper, and then they would just adjust on the camera settings of the white balance so that the, the picture would just accordingly based on how the white balance is. So. Well, I'm not sophisticated enough to do that live. But, uh, <laughs> no worries. It gave me an opportunity to the... Well, it's like demo. what what settings should the white like? What's the set like? What's the range? Is it like one, two, three? Is it how is it metered? Like uh, like you know, like with the with your LED lights, where the the light daylight is like fifty six hundred, and then yeah, yeah, and, see, and then the um, this one I have thirty five hundred, mm -hmm. and I have. A B zero G M M two. I don't know what that means, but thirty five hundred K is what it says. Right. And I thought that had to do with the lights. Now that I jacked these lights up, these are forty four hundred. I have the lights on, but yeah. I don't know what that means. Well, it's just I mean, it's just the idea of just how much light you're letting into the, the room and then when you white balance it tries to match with what it's picking up on the camera. So like if it's if it's really uh now he says it, my shot looks good i wouldn't worry about it says john okay well this is at 3500k yeah and a hyphen b colon zero and g hyphen m colon m2 i have no idea what that means but that's also on my custom one setting okay So, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That's all good. I mean, <laughs> that's what we're here for. Not only we, not only we're going off the rails, but it's also we'll, we'll do geek talk and just kind of share notes and stuff. So, but no, I got to be careful because I was almost going to make a marketing point, and I'm just trying to keep it more towards the entertainment and just what the fans are all about as to what we're watching, what we're talking about. So in this case, we're just talking about the Matt's camera and his white balance. Uh, yeah. And my ever expanding list of tech gadgets to get the show running, like the, the future purchase of the cloud lifter. Here we go. And John adds, if you know what your settings are on your light, I said that you set your white balance to the same. Well, well, so they go up and down because see, I had to, yeah, now they're at 44. Well, I don't know. It the one's farther away from me. So mm -hmm. this one's set to, well, that's set to 44, but it's closer. So the one that's closer is strong. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, in my case, I just kind of cranked the, the daylight on my um, the lights to like 5,600 just because I just need something. Otherwise, I, you, you, you won't see anything here. Mm. <laughs> I look I still think I'll still look a little too red but I don't know the whole point was go ahead I, I got tired of the cheap webcam and not being able to control it because they don't update their software mm -hmm. and my uh, my old Canon camera is coming in through USB like there's like a new thing where Canon cameras DSLR cameras can work with USB in a limited fashion, and it was very limited. At least that what's LSP. <laughs> At least that's what Livestream Pro says. That's what LSP. Yeah. Says yeah. For. And they also say, you know, set the uh, the one over sixty for thirty frames a second, and one over one twenty five for. Now, one over 125 for 60 frames a second and one over 60 for 30 frames a second. Like, I, I don't know what that has to do with anything because I thought that was how long the aperture stays open when you're right. taking a a photo. Well, when you're taking video, it's it stays open. It doesn't open and close. I don't, I don't understand what that is. Oh, see, now that's one over 100. And I guess this is a 30 frame a second, so I guess I should change that setting there we go 80 oh look at this it is changing so that's 60 okay they're saying that should be 60 since it's putting out 
30 fr I don't I have no idea what what that setting is. I ha did have it to 125. There it goes to 125. I don't like I know like the higher the shutter setting is good if you're dealing like with green screen or um if you're doing like sports action type of shoots where you you need to slow down the the speed but or the fast speed up the speed to get well, the i shot. mean that makes sense i understand it when you're taking yeah. still photos yeah you know because you uh you don't want any blur like if you're if it's sports you want to capture the athlete with no blur motion so you crank that sucker way high yeah. and you know it just but i don't know especially like with green screens where if you, you want to make sure that when you're doing this you don't that get that green blur because you got a green screen that 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 adjusts that so but um green screens are not for the faint of heart you really got to know what you're doing <laughs> and you yeah. yeah yeah you really got to because they can go so wrong yeah usually like like with me, I like the when I was first starting out with with the live streaming, I've been trying to like figure out where working with multiple cameras and then just trying to be able to get it right with the green screen. And I had a lot of people talk me out of it just because based on where your camera's set up, you're not getting the same type of lighting depending on where you're in the room. And that just throws a monkey wrench in terms of how much you need to adjust the green screen because like you have to deal with the lighting and you have to make sure you don't get the um the blur what we're talking about so yeah and if you're too close to the green screen the reflection of the light can can cast onto your shoulders and your and your skin <laughs> just the uh, john just threw another uh a gif of a train going off the rails oh <laughs> uh, i couldn't see it come through on the show comments screen i'm not on the and i i had to like set up another link just to see what it is because like it doesn't pick up on StreamYard, which kind of stinks so otherwise i wouldn't know what would it look like but uh but yeah like i said folks it, this this would be the show that would really just because it's been that kind of day folks <laughs> we can do that here on sha la 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 productions we do what we want exactly oh wait oh that's too close it, ha it has to be 0.8 feet away. If it's any closer, then... Oh, wow, that's... Yeah. That's... This camera is performing better than the specs say it can. <laughs> but, uh... Yep. <laughs> Doki. Well, I'm glad that we have a chance to kind of check out the Matt's new camera and the Rodecaster. And as well as just to be able to share uh, the free wallpaper, I'm pretty sure Mackenzie kind of logged off. So, <laughs> but it was cool that the, she was able to, the, to come on and uh, share the link, share the um, share Dan's Instagram account profile, so that way folks who want to see the behind the scenes of the of the photos, uh, folks can do that too. Um, I think we're just gonna wrap up. Let me just throw one more thing before I forget, and this is a reminder that. Um, just like if people looking way to, to help, they can go to blacklivesmatter.com and NAACP.org. As well as, I know I, I need to shorten the link. If folks still need to look to create a, a live stream video to promote, um, get the word out about the medical responders or help in the hospitals, you know, just click on this link and just be glad to be able to provide a... a free live stream video as to how you can help them help help the helpers as they say and other than that um i think i mentioned this to you matt but i don't think i mentioned the others uh next week i won't be able to do a show just because as actually we have like a um a, pro, a program i gotta work on so uh that won't give me enough time to to, to get here on time so so our next show will be this is the 12th, so so the next show will be uh, the 26th. So um, just a little admin, folks, just because <laughs> I'm not sure if I'll be able to, to let Thursday Matt know. the 27th? Uh, I'm sorry, um, the 26th, Wednesday. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, not Thursday. Duh. Yeah. 
That's all right. On my other show, Mind <laughs> Was Blown, <laughs> which I, I highly recommend folks to check out with uh, with Brenda Matt Lee? and Brin and Brenda Lee. No relation. Um, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so that's that's the scoop there. So um, again, the links in the in the uh, the comments for folks to get the free wallpaper as well as the description. Uh, our next show will be on the twenty six, and again, uh, yeah. Nope. <laughs> Live long and prosper with the Vulcan salute. <laughs> I feel like I'm a lobster when I do that. So, um, but yeah, so that, that's a scoop, everyone. And you know where to find us for for questions, comments, uh, mad capillarity, wild, wild hijinks uh, from the two of us. But uh, <laughs> you've been watching uh, uh, Verbose Wednesday. I've been Rob. And that's Matt. I've been Matt. So there you go. So thanks again, everyone, for watching. And stay safe. Uh, where'd it go? Drop a oh. like. Oh, yeah. And, um, and for Matt's shows? Yeah. Hang on. Awesome with things. There you go. All right. Stay safe, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>